Hey, what's up ladies or diamonds as I like to call you because you're so amazing and beautiful. Hey, listen, today I want to talk to you about the strongest drug that is known to man. Yes, I know you thought that it was cocaine. I know that you thought it, it was heroin. Mm -mm, no, no. I am talking about a narcissist. Now, today I'm talking about um, or t I'm talking to one of several type of women. I'm talking to those of you who you know you've been involved with a, a narcissist and you already know how crazy that is. Now, some of you are in relationships with narcissists. You don't even know that you are. OK, some of you have no idea what in the world I'm talking about. And this is just, you know, informational to you. Whatever doesn't matter. Now, let me say this. Jesus said to the disciples because they came to him and they said, listen, we, this guy had this demon and we couldn't cast the demon out. What was up with that? Jesus said this one only comes out by prayer and fasting. What in the world does that mean as it relates to a narcissist? The narcissist is not susceptible to normal relationship behavior. OK, you don't just get over a narcissist the same way that you you would get over somebody that, you know, it just didn't work out and we just broke up. Mm -mm -mm. Now the narcissist is like a drug pusher. Okay. He is pushing that strong narcotic right in your veins. The narcissist is very manipulative. Okay. And has absolutely no empathy whatsoever. So whatever you're going through, whatever pain, okay. And, 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 and torture they cause you, they don't, they don't even have the capacity to feel for you in any regards, all right? So there's no remorse and they take no responsibility for doing this. Now, here are some of the symptoms that you will have after being in a relationship with a narcissist. You may feel depressed, okay? Now, this ain't just normal depression. This is extreme. I'm talking about rage, bouts of jealousy, I'm talking about jealousy on the level that it makes you want to do some things that you have never in your entire life entertained doing, but the narcissist will take you there. Lingering sense of emptiness. emptiness. I mean, you are an emotional black hole, okay? Um, loneliness, feeling crazy, okay? Like you're going to lose your mind. Feeling lost and rejected and abandoned, all right? All these things. If you're, if you're like, wait a minute, hold on. I'm, I'm feeling all that right now. Listen. You might be in a relationship with a narcissist. OK, now, who is it that this particular dope pusher looks for? The narcissist looks for givers, ladies. If you are a giver, OK, the narcissist knows that they can turn you into an easy mark. OK, because they know that you are always going to want to be accommodating, that you're always going to want to help make excuses for their behavior. So let's look at the stages of this thing. The first thing is they're going to take you through this idealizing stage. All right. So what does that mean? That means that that's where the chemical dependency is set up. All right. That's where they you're at a, a, an event. OK. And maybe you're drinking something and they come along and they sprinkle something in your drink. OK. And you drink it and you're like, hmm, that's good. Yeah. This ain't the normal kind of good. You know, your drink has been spiked. So now you find yourself wanting more. You ever happen to stay do that with sweets and all kind of stuff. And you drink soda and you've been and drunk a whole two liter. Like, I know I ain't still thirsty, but I still want more. That's what this is. You cannot get enough because they are going to love bomb the crap out of you. All right. They're going to be giving you everything that you want in every way that you want it. Okay. Flowers, candy, dates. Hey, good morning. Beautiful. You know, every single day. Good night. I can't wait to talk to you first thing in the morning. Buying you get everything that you want. And I mean, it's just on overload. And what this does, this gets you dependent. OK, you get dependent on this love bombing. All right. And they want you to. They want you get to uh, get addicted to all of this attention that they are giving you now. How else will they do this? They'll mimic you. They'll mimic all your hopes and dreams. They'll act like they have the same hopes and dreams. They'll mimic your interests. Oh, you like bike riding. I love bike riding. You like working out. You know, you like going to speakeasies. You like going, you know, drinking wine, whatever. All right. They'll mimic your insecurities. Yeah, I was abandoned as a child. You know, um, I always felt rejected. You know, oh, you did too. I felt that way because they know that we are more inclined 
to connect with people that we feel like there's some strong sense of commonality. So they want to be, you know, they want to be common in ways with you, like as many ways as they possibly can, basically. All right. So after they do this, they'll look at your beauty. All right. They'll say, oh my God, you know, your, your hair, your skin, your eyes. I mean, they would just obsess over your physical features. I mean, listen, we know that women are wired to be desired. So when a guy is doing this, I mean, listen, he's speaking your language. Now, he will also start to bring up his ex. But the way he'll bring up his ex is he'll say things like this. He'll say, you know, she was always putting me down and no matter what I did, it was never good enough for her and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And he'll start to say specific little things, but this is to set you up and to warn you that you better not say these things. Okay. Now he's not saying it like that, but knowing that you are a giver, see, that's, we needed that. I mean, that's a target. Then you're not going to want to hurt him in the same way that she hurt him because now by him having this conversation with you, you can see how devastated he is and you would never want to hurt him in that way. Okay. So now once we start this, now we're going to shift on you. Mm -hmm. Now we start to go through the devaluing stage. All right. Now this is where the arguments start. This is where the nitpicking start. This is where everything is now all of a sudden your fault. Okay. You're not as amazing. Okay. You're not as awesome as you once were. All right. During the idealizing stage. Now you are the cause of his problems because see, he's always going to be the victim. Nothing is ever going to be his fault. Oh God, no. Okay. And then when you start in these arguments or when you're in these arguments, now you're going in circles. So you'll talk about something, think that you worked it out and he will start right back up on you again. Like you've never talked about it. And you're like, wait a minute. We just talked about this. I mean, I, am I going crazy? Yes. He is trying to make you crazy. Gaslighting, you know, he's telling you little lies and, and doing little things that he knows is wrong. Okay. And then at first you're not going to say nothing about it. You know, you're like, I don't want no trouble. I ain't trying to, but you know, then you can't take it. Just like, no, wait a minute. This is just obvious. Now, when you do bring it up, he's going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking? I didn't do that. You know, see why are you now see you're the problem all over again. You know, the triangulation. Oh boy. So now he's going to bring somebody into the situation to try to pit them against you and make you feel like you're crazy. Oftentimes that's an ex. All right. Oftentimes that's that ex that he was talking about that he used to complain to you about. Now, all of a sudden, they're best buds. You know, she understands him in ways that you don't understand him. OK, you know, liking stuff on Facebook, ignoring your stuff. I mean, you know, getting the attention. She's now getting some of the attention that you used to get. And now you don't understand it because, you know, I mean, first of all, I thought you said that she was crazy. And now all of a sudden you seem like y'all she's your new BFF what's going on now it could it could be somebody new okay that he's grooming all right for his next target but whatever it is now you find yourself in this crazy type of love triangle but if you bring it up he doesn't understand why are you so jealous why are you always jealous why are you so insecure you know see that's the thing I'm talking about I can't be with somebody like you because you know you, you're just not confident now you think that I used to be confident I used to be somebody that was strong now all of a sudden how is it that I've turned into this person that seems all insecure is because he has tried to make you this way. Everything he has done since he set eyes on you, all right, has been set up for you to go crazy. All right. Because that is what allows him to pull off this con. Now, all right, here is where he begins to discard you. Okay. Like you are yesterday's trash. Okay. And it, listen, he does it so smooth. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it just meant nothing to him. He is going to torture you. He is going to, first of all, if he, you know, not yet, but when he breaks up with you, he's going to do it in such an insensitive way. He'll do it like over a text message. Yeah, this ain't working. You know what I'm saying? I'm out. You know, I got somebody, somebody there who appreciates me. Who does that? Who says that, you know, this ain't working. Now I got somebody who really appreciates me. No, he does that because his, his, it's his job to make you suffer for doing what he feels is not appreciating him. You know what I'm saying? And so this makes you insanely jealous. Of course it makes you jealous. All right. And the thing about it is he's going to do sick things like give you the silent treatment because he knows that you want some sense of closure in this situation. You want some kind of explanation. How is it that I went from, you know, wonder of the world to now you don't even want to be seen with me. OK. And he's just got you so crazy. And now he's telling the new target, oh, you're out of your mind. 
because she's getting love bombed. She's getting what you were getting. All right. So now when he tells her about all the stuff that you're doing and how crazy you are, she don't understand. She's like, yeah, she's got to be crazy because this guy, he's a salt of the earth. He's amazing. Why would she even? And, you know, so now he's a yeah, baby, she just didn't understand me and blah, blah, blah. So now the cycle is starting all over again. OK, he's going to parade her in front of you all on Facebook. I mean, no more than a week, maybe not even a week after y'all then broke up. OK, he's going to be all, ah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Taking her to all the places he didn't take you that he talked about. He would even maybe the place that you said you always wanted to go. All right. That you would tell him he'll end up taking her there and flaunting it in your face. Yeah. You always wanted to go to Fiji. OK. Is it Fiji? Fuji? Whatever. Now he's going to take her there and then let you see it. See them having a good time. He's a dirty son of a gun. I am trying to tell you. So listen, if you've been in this kind of relationship, first of all, you know what I'm talking about. You absolutely know what I'm talking about. And now that it's over and meaning that it's not over how you feel, but you're no longer with the person. You feel stuck because you know what? You're craving your addiction. See, that was the significance of the love bombing. I had to get you strung out. OK, because as long as you still want it, you as long as you still need a hit. All right. Then I can always use that as my way to come back in. All right. Because typically people who are involved with narcissists, they go back and again 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 before they officially say, I can't do this anymore. I really can't. But here's the thing. After, OK, they 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 fully dump you. You can't do nothing. You can't function. You don't want to eat. You don't want to sleep. Now, this is beyond normal heartbreak stuff. This is on a whole nother level. You stop you wanting to take care of yourself. Your hygiene goes. You ain't doing your hair. You ain't doing nothing. You just want to sleep all day. Some of you have had suicidal thoughts. OK, some of you have actually attempted suicide because the idea of not having this person, which you feel they represent in your life, is just unimaginable. You don't even want to go on living. You are just depressed and your friends and family can't understand it. Come on, snap out of it. What's the problem? What are you doing? And they don't understand. OK, because from what they saw of him anyway, he didn't seem to be that bad because he's never going to show them all of the crap that he is putting you through or that he put you through. So they're thinking, hey, listen, you know, it didn't work out. But no, it's way more than it just did not work out. He listen, he set you up. He did. He spiked your drink. He got you strung out. OK. And then he was your pusher. And then he just dropped you, left you high and dry. And so, listen, if you are dealing with this. Now, you may say, I don't know if I was in, involved with a narcissist or if I am involved with a narcissist. Maybe you're not. Maybe you just got some of these things going on. Or maybe some of you full fledged as narcissists. This person is sick. And you say, listen, I'm dealing with all the stuff that you're talking about. All right. Then you need to get some help. Now, if y'all want to see some more videos, you can go to my YouTube channel, my Doc Reed YouTube channel. Check out some of my other stuff. And some of y'all may need to talk to somebody right now. You can hit me up for a free 30 minute consultation and we can get it in. But whatever it is, you need to get some help. You need to get out of that situation. I mean, like yesterday. If you are still in it or if you are trying to recover from it and you feel like I ain't making any ground, you need to do something. OK, so, hey, hit me up. Get at your boy, whatever the case may be. However, you got to get out and survive and save yourself. Make that happen. Listen, I got to go. I'm out of here. I hope you all have a great week and I'll talk to you later. Peace.